Good day, Grade 10. So, in this lesson, we're going to be starting with introducing you to the basic different quadrilaterals and looking at their specific properties. So, the first thing we need to look at is the different properties of a parallelogram. So, what makes a par parallelogram? A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So, in other words, we have got, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Let me just go back. AD is parallel to BC and AB is parallel to DC. So both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And that is the definition of a parallelogram. Massive four sides, it's a quadrilateral, and both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Now, let's look at the properties of a parallelogram. We already know that the both set pairs of opposite sides are parallel. But what is also true is that both pairs of opposite sides are equal in length, okay, which means that DA is equal in length to CB and that CD is equal in length to AB. Both pairs of opposite angles are also equal. This means that angle D is going to equal angle B and angle A is going to equal angle C. And finally, diagonals bisect each other. In other words, they cut each other in half. They're not equal, they cut each other in half. So in other words, the length from D to this cut point is equal to this cut point to B, and A is also split in half. Now let's look at how we can prove some of these properties. So the first thing that we're going to look at is that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. What we're going to prove in this video is a couple of fairly straightforward uh, parallelogram related proofs. And this first one, we're going to say, hey, if we have this parallelogram ABCD, let's prove that the opposite sides have the same length. So prove that AB is equal to DC and that AD is equal to BC. So let me draw a diagonal here. So I'm going to draw a diagonal. And this diagonal, depending on how you view it, is intersecting two sets of parallel lines. So you could also consider it to be a transversal. Actually, let me draw it a little bit neater than that. I can do a better job. So nope, that's not any better. That is about as good as I can do. So if we look, if we view DB, this diagonal DB, we can view it as a transversal for the parallel lines AB and DC. And if you view it that way, you can pick out that angle ABD is going to be congruent. So angle ABD, that's that angle right there, is going to be congruent to angle BDC because they're alternate interior angles. You have a transversal, parallel lines. So we know that angle ABD is going to be congruent to angle BDC. Angle BDC. Now, you could also view this diagonal, DB, you could view it as a transversal of these two parallel lines, of the other two, the other pair of parallel lines, AD and BC. And if you look at it that way, then you immediately see that angle DBC, angle DBC right over here, angle DBC is going to be congruent to angle ADB, to angle ADB angle ADB for the exact same reason. They are alternate interior angles of a transversal intersecting these two parallel lines. So I could write this. This is alternate alternate interior angles. Interior angles are congruent when you have a transversal intersecting two parallel lines. And we also see that both of these triangles, triangle ADB and triangle CDB, both share this side over here. It's obviously equal to itself. Now, what is, why is this useful? Well, you might realize that we've just shown that both of these triangles, they have this pink angle, then they have this side in common, and then they have the green angle. Pink angle, side in common, and then the green angle. So we've just shown by angle, side, angle that these two triangles are congruent. So let me write this down. We have shown that triangle, I'll go from non-labeled to pink to green. A, D, B is congruent to triangle, non-labeled to pink to green. C, C, B, D, C, B, D. And this comes out of angle, side, angle congruency. So this is from angle, side, angle, 
angle side angle congruency. Well, what does that do for us? Well, if two triangles are congruent, then all of the corresponding features of the two triangles are going to be congruent. In particular, side DC, side DC corresponds to side BA. Side DC on this bottom triangle corresponds to side BA on that top triangle. So they need to be congruent. So DC, so we get DC is going to be equal to BA. And that's because they are corresponding sides. Corresponding sides of congruent, congruent triangles. So this is going to be equal to that. And by that exact same logic, AD, AD corresponds to CB. AD corresponds to CB. AD is equal to CB, and for the exact same reason. Corresponding sides of congruent triangles. And then we're done. We've proven that opposite sides are congruent. Now let's go the other way. Let's go the other way. Let's say that we have some type of a quadrant. Okay, we don't need to go the other way. We just needed to prove that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. But we are going to use part of the video that he showed us, and we're going to prove that opposite angles are equal. In fact, he's kind of done it for us already. I'm just going to choose a color that you'll be able to see on here. We, he proved in the previous thing that this triangle, triangle ABD, is congruent to triangle D. C, B. Now, if you look at that, we can see that this little angle here is equal to that little angle there. And these, this purple double angle is equal to that. So if we added these up together, you would see that the whole of angle D is obviously equal to the whole of angle B. So that there proves to us that angle D is equal to angle B. Okay, let me be more specific. I can okay, I can say the whole of ADC is equal to the whole of angle B. Now, if this little angle is the green angle, angle ABD, and the purple angle, I mean D is equal to the double purple, which is ADB, then do you agree that this angle here, little star, is going to be 180 minus angle ABD, which we've already said is equal, minus angle ADB, ADB, okay? And that is equal to the little star. Similarly, angle C is going to be 180 degrees minus angle DBC, DBC, minus angle BDC, BDC, okay, which equals, in this case, also star. And the reason being is that angle ABD is equal to angle ABD is the same as angle BDC, and angle DBC is the same as angle ADB, which means that these two angles are obviously also equal. So there we have proven that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. How would you do this if you were doing this in the exams? You would just prove that these two triangles are congruent, just like we did before, and then you would just relate the angles instead of the sides. Now let's move on to another property. Let's look at the fact that diagonals bisect each other, and I'm just going to change to arrow and then we're going to look at this video. So we have a parallelogram right over here. What I want to prove is that its diagonals bisect each other. So the first thing that we can think about, these aren't just diagonals, these are lines that are intersecting parallel lines. So you can also view them as transversals. And if we focus on DB right over here, we see that it intersects DC and AB. And since they're, those we know are parallelogram, we know that they're parallel, this is a parallelogram, we know that alternate interior angles must be congruent. So that angle must be equal to that angle there. Let me make a label here. Let me call that middle point E. So we know that angle ABE, we know that angle ABE must be congruent to angle CDE to angle CDE by alternate interior angles of a transversal intersecting parallel lines. A alternate interior 
alternate interior angles. Now, if we look at if we look at diagonal AC, or we should call it transversal AC, we can make the same argument. It intersects here and here. These two lines are parallel, so alternate interior angles must be congruent. So angle DEC must be, so let me write this down, angle DEC must be congruent to angle BAE. BAE to angle B angle BAE by for the exact same reason. Now we have something interesting. If we look at this top triangle over here and this bottom triangle, we have one set of corresponding angles that are congruent. We have we have a side in between that's going to be congruent. Actually, let me write that down explicitly. We know we know and we we proved this to ourselves in the previous video that parallelograms not only are opposite sides parallel, they are also congruent. So we know from the previous video that that side is equal to that side. So let me go back to what I was saying. We have two sets of corresponding angles that are congruent. We have a side in between that's congruent. And then we have another set of corresponding angles that are congruent. So we know that this triangle is congruent to that triangle by angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. So we know that triangle, I'm going to go from the blue to the orange to the last one, triangle A, B, E is congruent to triangle blue, orange, and the last one, C, D, E, C, D, E by angle, side, angle, congruency. Angle, side, angle, congruency. Now, what does that do for us? Well, we know if two triangles are congruent, all of their corresponding features, especially all of their corresponding sides, are congruent. So we know that side we know that side EC side EC corresponds to side EA, or I could say side AE. We could say side AE correspond AE corresponds to side CE to CE. They're corresponding sides of congruent triangles, so their measures or their lengths must be the same. So AE must be equal to CE. Let me put two slashes since I already used one slash over here. Now, by the same exact logic, we know that DE, we know that, let me focus on this, we know that BE, we know that BE must be equal to DE. BE must be equal to DE. Once again, so they're corresponding sides of two congruent triangles, so they must have the same length. So this is corresponding sides of congruent congruent triangles. So BE BE is equal to DE. And we've done our proof. We've shown that look, diagonal DB is splitting AC into two segments of equal length and vice versa. AC is splitting DB into two segments of equal length. So they are bisecting each other. Now let's go the other way around. Let's prove to ourselves that, that if, if, the, if we have two diagonals of a quarter. Okay, and again, we don't need to do the corollary. So that is great. Now you've been shown how to prove that the opposite sides are equal. You've been shown how to prove the opposite um, angles are equal and you've been shown how to prove the diagonals bisect each other. So grade 10, what do you need to do? You need to know all your properties for your parallelogram. You need to know how to prove them. Thank you very much. Have a great day.